Welcome aboard to this low mileage US spec 2016 Volkswagen Passat. A fantastic midsize sedan with fantastic features at a pretty affordable price point. For the listed price of just $17,000, you get Volkswagen's somewhat quick 1.8 turbo four cylinder with 170 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque, a six speed automatic transmission, adaptive cruise control, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, dual zone climate, heated seats, USB, soft touch materials, plus a massive back seat with its own air vents. The list goes on. Better yet, this Passat only has 18,000 miles on the clock, making it feel close to brand new. Keeping in mind that this Passat had an MSRP of around $27,000 brand new back in 2016. The exterior is extremely classy. You get chrome appointments throughout the grill, the windows, and even the doors, but not too much. You even get a chrome tipped exhaust with a nice chrome line on the rear bumper and on the trunk. This design features both shoulder lines and some pretty cool hood lines too. There are a couple blemishes on this particular model, but that can easily be tweaked with a combination of paintless dent removal and touch-ups. In my opinion, this does not take away from the usability of the car at all. The lighting is pretty basic. We have halogen headlights with turn signals that double as driving lights. However, these are automatic, which is rare on a VW. Plus, halogens are going to be cheaper to replace, which ties into lower running costs since you don't have to buy a brand new headlight housing like with LEDs. The same goes for the rear taillights, which have a combination brake light and turn signal. They have a bit of a design profile to them too. This Volkswagen Passat is not all halogen though. The mirrors actually have built-in LED turn signals themselves, which give it a nice premium touch. However, if you prefer LED lighting on your Passat, the SCL Premium in this model year offered LED lighting for both the headlights and the taillights. Plus, that model featured fog lights too. Do keep in mind though that this trim will charge a premium over the SE model that we're looking at today. And on that trim, a 3.6 liter VR6 with 280 horsepower was also optional if you're looking for more performance. The exterior is understated and classy for the price point but the interior also classes it up compared to its other midsize rivals of the day and even modern VWs. Once you're inside, you'll notice that there are soft touch materials on the dash and all of the door panels. You can tell that Volkswagen wanted this to feel more expensive than their other vehicles. The centerpiece is this simplistic analog clock and they give us this wood look plastic trim too. The steering wheel is fantastic. It's leather wrapped and flat bottomed, Plus, it's got very ergonomic controls for cruise, your gauge cluster, and the radio. The gauge cluster shows lots of information. On the left is your tack with oil temp gauge, and on the right is your speedometer with fuel gauge. In the middle, there's a 4-inch multi-function display that shows your digital compass, speed, odometer, temperature, and your trip meter. This is where you'll go to configure just about all of the vehicle settings too. In the cockpit area, there's also this massive storage door, which is almost like a driver's side glove box. It's big enough to hold an older iPhone or iPod, and it even has coin slots. The door panels have very solid grab handles, padding on the armrests, easy to use mirror controls, one touch for all four windows, a shortcut button for the trunk, and pretty large vertical bottle pockets. Next are these leatherette seats that are also heated. The driver's seat is power, but the passenger's seat has manual adjustments. They do both have the same level of adjustment though. They're reclinable, height adjustable, slideable, and they even have lumbar support, which is surprising for a manual seat. You can adjust the steering wheel too, since it is both tilting and telescoping. Next, I'm gonna let vlog style me go over this composition media stereo along with the rest of the interior. We have this little 6.3 inch touchscreen head unit with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, since this is a 2016, they were only doing wired at the time. So it's a little old school, but still pretty easy to use. You have four buttons on this side and four buttons on this side. And we still have a CD player, which is kind of cool to see. We don't have any kind of navigation on that. You did have to upgrade to get that, but you do have a Sirius XM satellite radio if you choose to subscribe to that. You can hit the menu button, go back to the home screen. You can swipe through it like this, or you can turn the dial on the right. This dial actually fully works with Apple CarPlay. You can also pair your phone or whatever device to Bluetooth, or you can use the aux port built right into the center door just beneath this. Now, an interesting feature is that this actually has an SD card slot if you wanna have music, images, whatever through that. And I did say images, 
because you can actually view images on this head unit if you plug it into the USB or you insert an SD card. It's very interesting and you can even choose how, how long you want the image to show on the screen for. So you can do a bit of a slideshow, I suppose. I don't really know why you would want a feature like that, but it's funny to see it anyway. If we hit the sound button, we can very quickly configure all of our sound settings. You can actually set your max startup volume and you can even change your speed dependent volume. So you can leave it off if you want or you can have it so the volume turns down when you slow the car down. A lot of people like that, but I personally like to keep that off. And you can even change your aux volume too, since Volkswagen figured that whenever you're plugging in an aux device, the volume on that device is gonna be completely different than what you have it set to in your car. So that's nice to see. You can of course change your bass, your mids, your treble, very nice to see. And you can even change your fader so I can have it all the way over here, but of course I like to keep it in the middle. And you can even turn on and off the touchscreen tone, which as you can hear, might get a little bit annoying, so it's nice that you can turn that off. And then of course, if you just wanna mute your radio, you can hit the mute button. I like that there's a little shortcut button there. Now, of course, we have a fully physical volume dial over here, but notice how the volume doesn't change if nothing's playing. That's definitely an interesting thing, and I've seen that a lot on newer VWs. So very surprising to see it in older ones too, but of course, it's got the Volkswagen thing where it stays in whatever position you put it, so I like to keep it right up and just use the steering wheel controls. And then taking a look at that reversing camera, it's extremely basic. We don't even have any curving trajectory lines, but it's pretty easy to park your car with this. It's not the highest resolution, but you can change your brightness, your contrast, and your saturation, although not really sure why you'd want to do that, but I suppose if you're in the dark and you want to see things a little bit more clearly, that might be a helpful feature to have there. But overall, a very basic rear view camera system for this $16,000 car. And just beneath the head unit, you have your fully physical dual zone climatronic climate controls. They are very easy to jump from low to high on those autumn days where it is freaking cold in the morning and freaking warm in the afternoon. You know how that goes. You have your max window defroster right there. You can see it'll automatically turn that on if you so choose. But the nice thing is if you turn it off, it actually restores all of your settings that you had before. You can also turn on and off your rear defogger right there. Very nice touch. You can quickly turn on and off the AC just like that. But again, it restores all of the settings back to where they were. You got your fan speed right there. You of course have your automatic climate control if you want. And to turn that off, you can just adjust the fan speed. This doesn't do anything. It's just a little icon showing you that it does what it does. And then of course you can sync your air if you want. You can make this temperature completely different from the other side. And you can hear that kick in in the background there, which is kind of funny, but you can hit the sync button to turn that back off. But don't worry, that's just the AC doing its thing over there. Now we do have outboard heated seats on the front, which is very nice, three stages. And of course, if you want to direct your air, you can do that with these little buttons. You can do it on any combination of anything that you choose. I really like that. These are pretty easy to use if you're just on the fly, on the road. You don't have a ton of time to look at the climate controls. You can just set them to where you want them to be. And of course, you have your recirx. Overall, these are pretty easy to use climate controls. Plus, you even have vents in the back too, unlike the smaller Volkswagen Jetta. And just beneath your beautiful climate controls, we have this little door here. If we press on this little thing, you can open this up and this gives you a little bit of access to some more storage, plus your USB-A for your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, a 3.5 millimeter aux jack and a 12 volt socket with some nice backlighting. Plus, I like how there's enough depth that you could realistically put a small phone on there if you so choose. And over here we have your shifter for your six speed automatic transmission. It has sport mode and manual shift modes, but it's a pretty responsive transmission, just like in any of these older Volkswagen products. The shifter has aged pretty well given its age and 18,000 miles. One thing I find really funny is how we have a plethora of blank switches here since this is the SE. I do believe you got a couple of buttons on these if you upgraded to the SEL, but nothing crazy there. I do wish we had less gloss black, but this was really the beginning of the glossy trend back in 2016. Over here we have some more hard plastics, but again, in my opinion, this is not such a big deal on a car this inexpensive. And let's go ahead and take a look at the cup holders for a second. You can see that we have four teeth on each cup holder, plus a nice little lining in there. You can see it's got two tiers since we have a slightly inclined center console, but it holds my Starbucks tumbler in here perfectly fine. Plus we have a little tray here. I'm assuming this would be a great place to put a key fob on the keyless models, but 
since we have a turnkey that is not that functional on this particular car but i really like how we have a handbrake love to see handbrakes especially in 2024 with these cars coming with electromechanical finger brakes i love to see an old school handbrake now if we lift this little latch just beneath here we can get access to our center console you can see that it's actually got a decent amount of storage we have a 12 volt socket we have a blank here i'm assuming would be for usb and a higher trim but who knows either way we have a nice little carpet in there and there's plenty of room to put all the various things you might need plus we have a little card holder here too and just underneath here we have a fully lockable glove box which you almost never see anymore you can see it's actually a decent size you have your tpms reset button there you can lock the trunk from here too for valets plus we have a little convenience like just above there we have a nice little shelf i'm assuming would be a better place to put this user's manual the user's manual fits successfully up there so you can free up a lot of space and get a lot of room in your glove box a lot of vehicles let alone mid-sized sedans do not offer this anymore so it's pretty nice to see. Although you can see that it's the hard plastic and so it's gotten scratched up over the years. But in my opinion, since you're paying so little for this car, it's not really a big deal. Above here, you have nothing too fancy, just a regular manually dimming mirror, but that was the case on most VWs at the time. Now up here, you have your period correct Volkswagen dome lights, they're halogen, which is pretty nice. You have your door open controls right here. We even have telematics since this is a 2016. We have a sunglass holder with a door and I really like that, but this dial is by far the fanciest part of this overhead console. Now this allows you to open the sunroof of your Passat. You can see we just tilted it up by turning it to the left right there. But if we turn it all the way to the right, you can see we can open this very small sunroof and let all that beautiful air in. And we even have our little catchment right there too. I'm gonna go into my ultra wide lens for this, but we have a little sunroof here with this nice little, I guess a CD holder or a bobby pin holder. That's kind of nice to see, but we have a little convenience light here when you open the door and they are also fully extendable too if you don't want that sunlight to get in in this corner. So even though the front seat offers lots of amenities, especially for this price point, the back seat has a ton of leg room. This seat is approximately in my default driving position. I'm about 5'8", so taller people are gonna have an amazing time back here. There's even some room under the seats for my shoes. And if I point the camera toward my lovely face, you can see I have quite a bit of headroom back here too. So if legroom is what you're after, you definitely want to get the Volkswagen Passat over the Jetta. Now, that being said, these back seats are the exact same units, or at least as I think, that are in the back of my personal 2012 Volkswagen Jetta. They do have different upholstery to match the front seats though, and they have little tethering points for the outboard seats, although not the middle seat, that is to be expected. One thing I really like is how we have rear seat AC which the Jetta does not have in the equivalent generation although the Mark 5s had it funnily enough and there's even a little USB-A port down there so you can charge your phone USB-C is honestly not expected considering that this is a 2016 now the door panels are roughly the same as the front they have the same grab handles the same padded armrest the same one touch down and up windows as I discussed earlier but you can see we have a slightly smaller bottle pocket to conform to the door obviously we do have the same materials the same hard plastics in the same areas and I really like how Volkswagen didn't skimp on the soft touch in the back either like they do on their newer cars plus a really interesting thing I noticed is that there's lock buttons on the back doors something that you do not see on many sedans let alone newer VWs so because of its larger size you would think this is probably a better vehicle than the Volkswagen Jetta to have a middle seat we still have a pretty large transmission tunnel same size as the Jetta which sends your feet into the outer two areas but you can see there's still plenty of room for their feet to go the seat size is the exact same as the jetta but because of that leg room and a little bit of extra headroom you do get the perception that you have a bigger middle seat in here there's only a little bit of room for my co-passengers but you could honestly ride back here on a short trip but for taller people i don't recommend it at all there's just plenty of room for me being five eight and a half so if you have a short passenger send them to the middle seat and i really like how volkswagen didn't skimp out on the pockets here too we have one for the driver's side and the passenger side plus we have a center armrest here this is identical 
to the one that you get in the Volkswagen Jetta of the same generation. But you can see we have three different sizes of cup holders. This one's the biggest, this one's medium. You can see there's a little bit of a lip here that this one does not have. And we have an extra tiny one. Not really sure what the tiny one's gonna be used for, but I really like how Volkswagen has done that. There's no sort of storage here, but it's plenty padded, meaning that you can be very comfortable back here on a long trip. It's an extremely comfortable back seat, and I really like how Volkswagen did not skimp at all back here given the price point. But we're not done just yet. We do have two absolutely massive rear dome lights back here, which is greatly appreciated. Definitely much nicer than the much smaller unit that you get in the Jetta. Volkswagen has definitely prioritized its back seat passengers in the Passat. But we're not done just yet. We can fold these seats from the trunk area that can also be accessed by opening that little button right there. And you can see we have a little bit more room in the Volkswagen Jetta. Please excuse the wind. But you can see we don't have a ton of amenities back here other than a little dome light back here. We have plenty of space to put anything you could possibly need, such as your groceries and whatnot. We can lift up this false floor for access to our Space Saver Spare. Plus we have a jack and some other various accessories to get that set up. I love how they included that so you're truly not stranded if something goes wrong. We also have little tethering points here and here and back there too. Plus we can pull these little levers to fold the seats. However, all it does is just release them. It does not push them down for you, but with a little bit of movie magic, we can fold the second row seats down to give us some pretty good length back here. One thing that we do not have on the Passat that the Jetta did have is a little pass-through in the center console. You could put a bike back here if you took the front wheels off. It's very nice that we have a lot of space in this US spec Passat anyway, but let's go ahead and see how the Volkswagen Passat drives. Now, I immediately wanna start with the steering because that is the first thing I noticed a little bit different from earlier VWs of this generation, particularly the Passat and the Jetta. I did notice that Volkswagen did switch from hydraulic power steering to this electromechanical power steering that you see in this one. It still has just as much steering feel, but I find it a little bit easier to drive, plus you feel a little bit less of the bumps in the steering wheel. It still wobbles a little bit over 70 miles an hour, but it softens it out nicely with this electromechanical counterpart. Now, I especially like the flat bottom steering wheel, frees up a little more room with my legs. It definitely takes a little bit of getting used to when you're turning and it's just like, oh, where did that part of the steering wheel go? I do overall like the aesthetics of the steering wheel. The cruise control is pretty easy to use. I was pretty surprised to see that this one actually has adaptive cruise control. An item that is still an option on $70,000 BMWs is standard on this Passat SE that you can get for $16,000 with only 18,000 miles on it. How crazy is that but it's pretty ahead of its time for 2016 next is the acceleration and the transmission feel we do have a six-speed automatic transmission in this counterpart we also have a floor mounted pedal which I also like for nice smooth response when you floor it there is a little bit of a delay before it decides to respond and get into gear but it's nothing too terrible if you've driven one of these six-speed automatics you know exactly what I am talking about but overall it's very responsive the shifts are very smooth and with that 1.8 T we have pretty quick acceleration to 60 miles an hour. You do get pretty close to redline, but once you're getting on the revs, the engine becomes incredibly responsive thanks to the turbocharger. Definitely more responsive than the 2.5 liter five cylinder that preceded this. Is that more reliable? Yes, but the 1.8 Ts are still pretty reliable too. I love the EA888 four cylinders. They're pretty great engines too, especially in these newer generations in the 2016s. It's the perfect amount of power. You don't need anything more. Now, brake pedal feel is also pretty good too. It's a little bit sharper than what I am used to. I believe that is because we have disc brakes in this Passat. But when I go to brake the car, there is a little bit of a sensitivity on the very end of it. There's a little bit of a bite and you just feel that car lurch just a little bit when you're braking. It has a pretty good feel to it. And once you learn how to control it, you get a lot more braking power than in the drum brakes that I have in my personal Volkswagen Jetta. I keep comparing it to that car because this car is incredibly similar, albeit a little bit nicer. The handling is also pretty good too. You can roll this thing into a quarter. There's not a lot of body roll. Overall, you can have a little bit of fun in the corners in this Passat. It's perfectly modern enough to get Apple CarPlay. You get dual zone climate control. You get AC vents in the back 
and you still only are paying about $16,000. Sure, there's a little bit of cosmetic things on the outside, but mechanically, this thing is very sound. I got to drive it a little bit today, and it drives great. Overall, these things seem to be pretty reliable. So overall, you're getting a great deal for this Volkswagen Passat. It's a perfectly inexpensive car. It feels a little bit upscale with the fake wood trim and the analog clock. If you're looking for a sub 20K midsize sedan that offers lots of leg room, lots of basic amenities, adaptive cruise control, then I highly recommend this 2016 Volkswagen Passat SE. Thank you guys so much for watching my review of it. I hope you guys check out my other Volkswagen reviews, including a Volkswagen Arteon that I did at this same dealership about six months ago. I recommend you guys check that out if you're in the budget for something a little bit more expensive, but if you're looking for something cheaper, then this is the way to go. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next review. And of course, drive safe.